Welcome to the webinar. My name is Dr. Kuan Yu Liu. I'm a staff scientist here at QCAM. Today our talk is about GPU computing with QCAM and Brian QC. It will be presented by Ishvan Ladiansky. Ishvan is a chief scientist of Brian QC project working in the field of high-speed GPU implementation of Q quantum chemistry-related calculations. He got his degree in theoretical physics from Budapest University of Technology and Economics. In 2011, his thesis on reduced scaling heart rate flux calculation using tensor decomposition and neural network was awarded first prize on the National Scientific Students Association Conference from 2010 and 2013, he worked at um, BUT as an associate researcher on the MRCC quantum chemistry package. Um, without any further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Ishvan. Thank you, Kuan Yu, for the kind uh, introduction. Um, yes, okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction. My name is Istvan Ladyansky, and I'm the chief scientist at the Brian QC project. And I'm going to talk about GPU computing with QCAM and Brian QC. So uh, if you're viewing this as a recording, you have a chance to comment on YouTube. And as far as I know, there will be a special forum topic for this webinar on QCAM's website. And also, if you have any questions, feedbacks, or any other uh, issues regarding the Brian QC module plus uh, QCAM or GPU computing uh, in quantum chemistry, uh, please feel free to contact me anytime at istvan.ladiansky at brianqc.com. So without any further ado, let's dive in. First, uh, we had a webinar approximately two years ago, and on my uh, on our previous webinar, I uh, uh, presented what is Brian QC in greater details. But because I'm not sure that everybody attended the uh, previous webinar, I'm going to uh, introduce Brian QC and the technology behind it briefly. First, from a bird's eye view, uh, uh, Brian QC is a GPU quantum chemistry library, which means that uh, we implemented a library. Uh, uh, which can uh, calculate different parts of quantum chemistry algorithms. We aimed to implement those parts of quantum chemistry methods uh, where the most uh, time is spent. So we uh, tried to implement the most time-consuming steps to GPU uh, because uh, in this way we can speed up uh, widely used quantum chemistry calculations the most. So Brian QC is not a standalone software. This is a quantum chemistry GPU library. And this quantum chemistry GPU library is a QCAM module as well, because QCAM is a user of the uh, uh, Brian QC quantum chemistry library. And from their code, they invoke the GPU implemented subroutines for different types of algorithms. Uh, to calculate parts of them, for example, electronic integral, uh, electronic repu uh, electron repulsion integrals for heart rate fog calculations and uh, other parts, which I'm going to tell in details. But Brian QC, besides a QCAM module, is also a software development kit, which means that if you download the QCAM plus Brian QC bundle, you will also get a software development kit which is a library callable through an API, and you can start to experiment uh, with it from your own code or other open source softwares, and it's callable from several programming languages, but I will show the SDK, uh, SDK use case in greater detail uh, on the later slides. So this is Brian QC from a bird's eye view, is a quantum chemistry library, which is currently mostly used through QCAM as a host software, but it's also a software development kit for your uh, projects, providing the power of GPU in 
any code where it is called. Okay, so this was the bird's eye view uh, uh, introduction of Brian QC. Now let's see some uh, actual features. <clears throat> First and foremost, Brian QC is a one and two electron integral calculator uh, uh, over Gaussian type basis functions. And it is capable of calculating high angular momentum integrals, so S, B, D, F, and G types of functions uh, um, can be used during the one and two electron integration process, which means that we can calculate up to quadruple zeta sized basis sets for uh, single point energy calculation in, for example, Hartree-Fock and DFT routines. Also, uh, besides this, we are uh, providing DFT functional and grid calculation uh, routines. We currently approximately um, has 300 functionals. This is, these are almost all the functionals from the well-known library LibX, LibXC. So we are uh, aiming to implement a library which has the same uh, precision as LibXC, which is a de facto standard in the uh, exchange correlation calculation library uh, scene. And we uh, also uh, aim for speed the exchange correlation related calculations up by the power of GPUs. So that's why we have almost uh, 300 or approximately 300 functionals and uh, well-known grids, for example, the standard grids and others, and also integration over uh, these well-known grids are included. Besides this, we have Hartree-Fock first analytical derivatives, uh, which are also usable from DFT calculations as well. We can provide uh, this first analytical derivative uh, for S, B, D, and F uh, uh, types of functions. So because of the level of derivation increased by one, the maximum uh, angular momentum is decreased by one as usual. So we can be used in geometry optimization tasks up to triple zeta sized basis functions on GPU. Uh, and we have terms for vibrational analysis uh, through the CPHF algorithm, the uh, coupled pair to Hartree-Fock algorithm, which is um, one of the most time-consuming steps of the vibrational analysis on a Hartree-Fock and, and DFT level. And we provide building blocks for uh, uh, vibrational analysis through the CPHF terms. Besides this, we have a diagonalization subroutine, which is not only a CUDA diagonalization subroutine accessible through our API. It's much more than that. It has a lot of computation routes where we uh, find the most optimal way how to diagonalize, how to diagonalize the ma matrix we got through our API. And the technology behind these uh, code passes and the so-called routes, I will tell uh, later in more details. So this is not just a GPU diagonalization routine. Uh, the CUDA GPU diagonalization routine is one uh, code pass uh, in this, but we are optimizing for other uh, cases. And uh, the above mentioned features are all available from QCAM, but there are some features which currently are only available through the SDK, the Software Development Kit usage of Brian QC. And this, uh, 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 an example can be the molecular mechanics routine and of course uh, the QMMM, where you use the previous mentioned uh, quantum mechanical calculations together with our MM routine to perform QMMM uh, uh, calculations. We have a few force fields. This is something which we just uh, getting our feet wet, a few uh, force fields only. We implemented the well-known DICE algorithm, initial guesses, and many, many more. So uh, only part uh, what is in Brian QC currently available through QCAM, but we are working on uh, together with QCAM to, uh, to, to, to speed up more and more calculations 
uh, by utilizing GPUs. Okay, so this is Brian QC from Burzai perspective and a few features. Let's see what the technology is behind it actually. And because in our previous webinar, I told about the technology in greater details, I'm only gonna summarize this briefly here. And if somebody is interested in more details, I would uh, like to uh, uh, point to our previous webinar where I tell this in greater details. And also we published a paper about the compiler technology, how we utilized it in uh, quantum chemistry in 2019, which can be found, for example, through my um, Google Scholar account, but anywhere else on the, uh, 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 through Google Scholar. I think the title is uh, somehow some, something like GPU, uh, utilizing, utilizing compiler technology for GPUs in quantum chemistry. Uh, and of course, in the publication, uh, greater details can be found about this technology. So first, uh, why I'm telling that this is a compiler and not just a code generator? Because as far as we define it, or as far as uh, it defined, uh, code generation is where you have a templates and you substitute parts of this template to generate code, which is later going to be compiled. But when you have a compiler, much more transformations or are done before any code generation become uh, any code generation is carried out. So, for example, first you have a computer algebra system as a front end of a compiler. Uh, if you want to think of a computer algebra system. Uh, Maple is a well-known uh, example for a computer algebra system. From our perspective, it can be thought of as something which is symbolically transforms and twists and turns uh, expressions. So the result uh, remain the same, but the symbolic expressions changes as it transforms them. So first, uh, the equations in quantum chemistry go through our computer algebra system and we uh, twist and turn them to our needs to be uh, to to close this <laughs> black box. Then we, we 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 compile an internal representation from the result of the computer algebra system. This is something which is <clears throat> transformable and can be easily rendered into machine language and. On this internal representation, we do other uh, transformations, and these transformations are different in computational complexity, in memory requirement, maybe in precision, but uh, in a given threshold, they give the same result. And these, uh, this internal representation is then transformed to steps to reach some uh, uh, to, 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 to generate a large number of routes, code passes, uh, we call them routes, and these routes, uh, gener uh, these routes are um, uh, logically, from, a, from an algebraic point of view, calculate the same quantity, but they, they are very different how the expressions are ordered, what is the computational complexity, what is the memory requirement. So these code passes result in the same uh, number or matrix or tensor or whatever, but they are very different when you, uh, when you uh, execute them from computational complexity and memory requirement. We generate a large number of routes for every calculation we support. And after that, uh, we have to somehow choose the optimal route. And for this, uh, we benchmark uh, all the routes, all the generated routes, uh, in several dimensions, of course, it's not a cross product of <laughs> these uh, 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 dimensions. We just we just we just sample it, but we have to benchmark how a given route uh, performs on a given card, on a given method, on a given molecule, on a given basis set with a given functional and whatever, because 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 these routes are highly uh, uh, differ uh, differ very much if you. Uh, calculate another molecule and another card, which is the optimal route. 
okay, uh, because this is a bit too uh, abstract, I would like to give an example. So for example, when you calculate electronic repulsion integrals, you have several well-known algorithms, uh, the Ries, the Obarashaika, the Pat Gordon Popel, McMurchy Davidson, and uh, maybe other uh, algorithms uh, uh, can be used to calculate uh, two electron integrals. And these integral algorithms has common terms. So you can mix them and calculate a term with one algorithm, another term with another, another algorithm, so you can mix them. You can choose if you calculate a given term in single precision, another one in double precision. You can mix what is computed after what. And because of this, hundreds of routes can be generated, which result in the same integral, but differ very much how uh, the compiler can optimize it and how many memory is required to execute it and what is the runtime. So same integrals, very different runtime, very different memory requirements. So we benchmark all the routes generated for not just two electron integral calculation, but for DFT and diagonalization and whatever. So every feature which we provide, we have several routes behind them. We benchmark them and then learn from this benchmark data, which is model fitting, but I tell it's learning from data because it is generalizing for unseen cases, because we cannot measure every card we support. We cannot measure every molecule, of course, <laughs> we are able to calculate. We cannot measure on every basis set. So because of this, it is not just the model fitting that how you uh, choose the calculation route for a given card, a given method, a given molecule. This is a little bit more because you have to extrapolate, generalize for unseen cases, how to route a given calculation. So this is the basic technology behind Brian QC. And of course, there are a gazillion other tricks, but generating routes and with a machine learning system, choosing the right route is the two main tricks. Again, I describe it in greater details in our previous webinar and uh, in our publication, uh, uh, other measurement data and, and um, uh, details can be found. Okay, so after we checked what's under the hood in uh, briefly, let's go to see some uh, measurements, how the Brian QC module performs. For the first part, I'm going to show some results in these so-called random branching hydrocarbons. And, I int and I'm introducing these molecules because uh, because, because uh, 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 when we interact with, with other research groups, the, the, the results on these molecules are somewhat confusing. So these are molecules consisting only of carbon and hydrogen atoms. They are branching because they are not chain-like one-dimensional structures, but we try to generate them to be bushy. Uh, so the screening is uh, giving realistic results because if you have a one-dimensional structure, then the, the, the screening won't give you realistic results. So that, that's why they are branching alkanes. And random, because we are generating them randomly, we only give the number of carbon atoms requires. And uh, we measure um, precision and performance data a lot on these molecules because they are chemically very similar to each other and the size can be fine-tuned, so, so the chemical space can be, can be, can be uh, 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 tracked uh, uh, in fine details. So these are going to be the molecules first. Okay, this is uh, a runtime diagram, and on the x-axis, the number of basis functions is changing from a few hundred up to almost 10,000 basis functions. This means that we generated random branching hydrocarbons from five carbon atoms up to 400 carbon atoms, which is approximately uh, 600 uh, atoms uh, with, hydro with hydrogens. 
And on the red line, you can see that what is the runtime for eight cores on this Xeon E5-2620 uh, CPU, so eight cores. And on the other lines, the blue and the green lines, it can be seen what is the runtime for an SCF uh, single point uh, Hartree-Fock calculation for on the GPUs. For this uh, plot, we used CCPV DZ basis set. And the same data in another uh, data view is the speed up, where the eight cores of the, the, the eight core CPU RAM is at the constant one level. So we normalized with the speed, with the time of the, of the CPU run and uh, the speed ups compared to the CPU can be seen for given cards. And as it can be seen uh, for a relatively old and, and relatively cheap GTX 1080 Ti card and above six times speed ups can be reached compared to eight cores of this Xeon CPU. And for newer cards, the RT, RTX 2080 Ti and for the Tesla V100, uh, above 10 times speed up can be reached for large systems and for systems uh, which most calculated in our user base, uh, four to eight times speed up can be reached in, a, in the range of few thousand basis functions. So this is hardship for results. In this next slide, uh, the same branching hydrocarbons are used, but for a DFT calculation with B3 LYP functionals. And as it can be seen, these are not toy calculations because as we increase the number of carbon atoms at 400 carbon atoms is a more than 14 hour calculation. So this is, these are not toy calculations. These are um, mid, mid time. <laughs> calculations and again uh, the speed up can be uh, seen that uh, for a 1080 ti we can reach up to 10 times speed up uh, sorry up to six times speed up and for the newer cards the gt the, the rtx 2080 ti and for the tesla v100 we can reach above 10 times speed up so uh, the speed up for the DFT calculation and for the hardship for calculation compared to eight cores of this Zion CPU is roughly the same, which is interesting because calculating the electronic repulsion integrals and calculating the exchange correlation contribution are very different uh, on the internals, and it shows that uh, they can be uh, used. Uh, 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 they can be calculated on GPU with the same efficiency. So for large systems, a magnitude of speed up can be reached both in Hartree-Fock and uh, DFT in this uh, functional and basis set. Okay. The question after this naturally arose, uh, does multiple GPUs help even more? And the answer is yes but we carried out some measurements to see how much, uh, how much it, uh, how, uh, it helps. So uh, two test systems were chosen. One is a cobalt complex and the other is a palladium complex. Uh, the inputs can be, I'm sure it can be downloaded from our website because we use them <coughs> regularly to, to, to benchmark the software. And in case of the cobalt complex, uh, DEF2 TZVP basis set were used, and in case of the palladium complex, the DEF2 QZ, QZVP basis set were used, and both calculated with the Minnesota functional M06-2X. Uh, on the most bottom line, you can see the timing for one GTX 1080 Ti, and uh, in the middle line for both molecules, you can see the timing and the speed up for two GTX 1080 Ti, uh, where it can be seen that in this uh, time uh, scale, so calculations uh, where uh, the calculation lasts uh, more than half an hour, I say. So in these in this low hour uh, range calculations, uh, an almost linear or linear speed up can be uh, seen from one device to two device. And on the uh, 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 uppermost line is 
uh, where four GTX 1080 Ti's were used for the same calculation. And in case of the Cobalt Complex, a 3.3 .3 time speed up can be reached with four devices and 3.7 with uh, four devices in case of the Palladium Complex. So it can be said that uh, an almost linear scaling can be reached by using multiple GPUs to, for, for DFT uh, on these molecules and, of course, <laughs> on other molecules as well. Okay. Now, the other thing which uh, is usually uh, interesting uh, for customers or for newcomers into GPU quantum computing is uh, when they are buying a workstation, they ask for help on what uh, hardware is best to use for uh, for GPU and quantum chemistry and QCAM and Brian QC. So I'm going to tell a few uh, uh, measurement data which can help in this decision. First, we uh, chose three molecules, toxol, valinomycin, and QQ butyrol, which uh, are roughly around a few tens of atoms up to uh, somewhere between 100 and 200 atoms for the QQ bitterol. I'm not sure about that, but somewhere in this range. And for every molecule, you have six bars. The bottommost line, the uh, orange one, is where you calculate uh, this uh, uh, DFT calculation with QCAM, CPU, QCAM only on eight cores. Above that, the purple bar shows that for every molecule, what if you calculate the same DFT uh, uh, run with 16 cores, but with CPU QCAM only, and the top four bars for every molecule shows different GPU calculations, uh, shows different GPU calculations. You can see the run times in minutes, and besides that, the speed up. So it can be said, that uh, uh, you can reach a 1.6, 1.7 times speed up for, for uh, doubling the number of cores in QCAM, but much more uh, speed up can be achieved if you are not upgrading the number, uh, uh, not increasing the number of cores, but adding GPUs to the system. Okay, so you can tell each one this is great. But how can I afford this? Is it affordable or it is better to just increase the number of CPUs? So that's why I'm trying to show these scenarios from an economic uh, uh, point of uh, an economic uh, point of view. Yeah, sorry about that. Something with the connection, maybe. Yeah, so an academic point of view. Okay, there are a lot to interpret on these slides, but uh, bear with me. So there are four scenarios in this slide. And for uh, uh, take the example as an academic user. So someone who works at academia wants to decide which hardware combination to buy for their uh, usage of QCAM plus Brian QC. On the uppermost scenario, you buy an Intel Zion CPU with eight cores plus four uh, 32 gigs RAM modules plus a motherboard, which is a dual socket motherboard, which will be handy when we are going to buy another CPU in scenario two. And you buy an academic license for QCAM for eight cores. You have to pay uh, 2700 to $2,800 approximately for this setup with license and a compute node. Okay, in the next scenario, you upgrade your QCAM license from eight cores to 16 cores. The processor, the RAM, and the motherboard is the same, and you buy another CPU which is the same CPU, and you don't have to buy another motherboard because that's why we bought the dual socket motherboard in the first scenario. And if you buy this uh, hardware and software combination, you have to pay 3,700 whatever dollars. So the cost multiplier is 1.3 compared to the first uh, 
compared to the first uh, scenario where you have only eight cores. And the speed up you get for 1.3 cost multiplier is 1.5 to 1.9. So it's, it's good to upgrade because uh, the speed up is increasing a little bit more than the price multiplier. And on the next scenario, which is the first GPU scenario, instead of buying another CPU, you buy an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti GPU and a Brian QC license for one GPU. In this case, you have to pay above $4,000 uh, and the cost multiplier is 1.5 but the speed up you gain is in the reach in the range of 2.6 to 6.1 which means that the speed up is increased much more than the price multiplier and in the last scenario you have the same node but you buy a relatively recent relatively <laughs> recent RTX 2080 Ti GPU and again a rank UC license for one GPU where you pay a little bit above $5,000, a price multiplier of 1.8, but the speed up you get for this price multiplier is a four to 10 times speed up. So uh, uh, this is the most aggressive increase in speed up compared to the price multipliers. So if you're not just calculating Brian QC's performance in seconds, but in second times dollars, this uh, 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 speed up compared to the price multiplier is something which, which most, time, <laughs> most times can, can uh, convince uh, people who are working in management as, <laughs> as far as I get feedbacks from, 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 from colleagues from research groups. Okay, so let's see the same uh, briefly for an industrial user. If you uh, buy an eight core license and an eight core computer as an industrial user, of course you have to pay more. So this is going to be 1.0. Uh, again, we're normalizing for the eight core case. So at the 16 core CPU only case in the second row, um, a cost multiplier of 1.6 gives you again, a speed up of 1.5 to 1.9, which is good. Again, pay, you're paying more, you get more. But in case of the two GPU scenarios where you have a Tesla P100 and a Brian QC license for one GPU for a price multiplier of 1.8, you get a speed up of 3.2 to 6.5. And if you buy a relatively new Tesla V100 GPU, you get a price multiplier, a cost multiplier of 2.1 and the speed up in the range of four to 10. And I showed this example because mostly our experience is that academic users use the much more cost efficient uh, gaming cards and in industry, uh, they prefer the Tesla cards, but these are only examples, of course, other <laughs> Uh, 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 setups can be calculated, but these are roughly the most uh, used setup uh, as far as my experience uh, goes. All right, so next, after these, uh, these um, economic um, considerations, let's see some real life applications. We are lucky to work together with a, a large number of research groups who are working in, uh, in working with uh, transition state metal complexes in several uh, fields of applied, uh, 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 applied theoretical chemistry. <laughs> if this is something, uh, if, 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 it's, if it's something I can say like this. And in these molecules, uh, we compared the performance of eight cores of the same Intel Zion CPU again to four NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti's and four uh, NVIDIA Tesla V100 cards. And it can be seen that in these uh, molecule uh, class where you have uh, these transition state metals and the uh, organic ligands around them, the integral count is very high compared to 
pure organic molecules with the same number of atoms. And as the number of integrals increase, you are able to stuff not just one GPU for a given molecule size, but four or eight or even more uh, GPUs. And because of this, these, uh, these uh, relatively good speedups can be reached. And again, these are not toy calculations. The uppermost calculation on CPUs uh, lasts uh, 250 hours. It's, it's more than one and a half week. And it can be reduced to five hour simulation with the same precision if you're using five, uh, sorry, four NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPUs. And again, the others are uh, smaller molecules, smaller integral counts, the speed ups are a bit smaller. But these are real life examples. People are working in this molecule range and these speed ups can be reached by using the Brian QC module. And uh, the same application again, but in another uh, uh, data view. In this slide to eight cores, I uh, we compared not just the four GPU case, but the two and the one GPU case. So it can be seen that in this relatively small transition state metal complex, one GPU can give 3.5 times speed up, two GPUs, uh, you get 5.4 times. And in four GPUs, you get a 10 times speed up compared to eight cores. So four GPUs is, uh, gives you roughly the same uh, scaling as 80 cores of the Zion CPU. If we assume linear scaling, which is rarely the case if you're going up to 80 cores, so, so I, 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 I would say more. I would say a, a, approximately a 100 cores for uh, four GPUs. On this uh, slide, we are uh, uh, seeing roughly the same. The difference is that uh, in the previous slide, we used the DEF2 TZ VP basis set, so triple zeta basis set up to F functions. And in this slide, it can be seen that it's a DEF2 QZ VP basis set. So uh, the calculation has G functions in it, which does not deteriorate the speed up. And it's a DFT calculation on this Minnesota functional again, which is uh, widely used in our user base. So these are real life applications. Uh, from our partners and a good speed up can be reached. All right. So uh, another feature which uh, is added in Brian QC 1.1 and first can be uh, used from uh, the current uh, QCAM uh, release, the 5.3, is vibrational analysis where we provide GPU subroutines through the CPHF algorithm. We calculate terms for the CPHF algorithm. And as it can be seen, the speed ups here are not as good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the speed up compared to eight cores are ranging from roughly 1.3 to 1.6. And the speed ups, so it, it can be stated that we have a break even against 16 cores. And I'm showing this because, because it's, it's really hard to do <laughs> quantum chemistry on, on GPUs. And, and usually the first version is, is something which, which has only a break event. Uh, but it has a lot of room for improvement. And we are concentrating on this module uh, very much uh, in the near future. So the feature is there. The precision is there. Uh, users can test it from QCAM and from the uh, software development kit as well. And it's a very, actually, technically, it's a very interesting thing to speed this up because it differs a lot from, from regular folk matrix building. And I hope in our next webinar, I can uh, 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 share better numbers and, and technical details about how we solved the problems in vibrational analysis because it's, it's, it's very exciting right now. And as I promised, uh, in the beginning, uh, the Brian QC module can be used as a software development kit, and I would like to show a few details. How can you do this? So you don't have to download any uh, uh, access things. If you download the QCAM plus Brian QC 
bundle, then the software development kit is already there. So it's downloaded because uh, if you go into your QCAM installation directory and uh, in there you find the brand QC directory and you uh, uh, step into the directory, you will find that uh, there you get all the Brian QC functionality through the API naturally, because that's the, that's the whole point of the software development kit. But in that directory, you will find an API documentation and the manual. So how the Brian QC module can be, can be invoked through its C API. You will find sample main source codes. Uh, these main codes are, uh, 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 our full quantum chemistry. Uh, 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 so, so they, they are they are high level. They are, they are they are implementing high level quantum chemistry routines like Hartree-Fock, DFT, QMMM, etc. And uh, in this directory, we provide the source code for this. Uh, I mean the top level uh, uh, Hartree-Fock routine, uh, which calls the Brian QC API, which then runs on CPU you have the source code for these main codes to tweak it, to learn it, how to call Brian QC uh, as an SDK. And you have the build scripts, uh, the CMake scripts, because these are actually the, 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 the top level uh, uh, software we're using in our nightly test system. So we are not testing through QCAM every night, we are testing these main codes we are testing the hardware functionality, the DFT, the QMMM, the whatever functionality through these main codes, uh, which can be built by the build script, and you can build it to yourself, run them, tweak the main code, uh, uh, build it, run again, see how it works. And these are again not just not just toy uh, 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 codes, because with the hardware uh, sample main code, we were able to calculate. Uh, an HIV uh, integrase enzyme, it had 2,600 atoms, and in a DEF2 TZVP basis set, it had, or TZVP basis set, I'm not sure which, it had 47,000, uh, or it was, a, it was a QZVP uh, basis set maybe, it had 47,000 basis functions, and it converged on four V100 cards in uh, in less than a day, as far as I remember. So these sample main codes can be used, and not just toy codes, but the source is there. You can play around with it, right? And the API is currently callable from C, C++, and Fortran. And the Python wrapper is coming for this API because we think it would give a good opportunity to the community. Uh, to use these GPU, GPU functionality from their Python code, if there is any. All right, after this, how can I get it? Installation. Let me show it in a video. Yeah, so uh, this video, okay, so first you have to go to our website, brianqc.com. And if you click on the I want the trial or something like this, you get to this page where you have to give your data, which is currently my colleague's data, because that's how we uh, uh, recorded the video. And this scenario will consist uh, of the, uh, we, we, uh, for the case where the user does not have a QCAM license yet, so for new QCAM users, okay? So this is, this is the case where you just getting into Brian QC plus uh, QCAM, and I will tell what is the difference if you already have a QCAM license of the right place. So basically you give few uh, other information and the platform currently is just Linux and you uh, get uh, a download link from QCAM in, uh, in most cases a few hours, but sometimes one or two days, you get a download link where you can download this QC install.sh, which is the installer for the QCAM plus Brian QC bundle. So we get this installer and make it 
executable and start the installer. Good. Okay, so this is the well-known QCAM installer. I don't really want to explain it in uh, details. Uh, here, you have to uh, choose the force option because this is the one that installs the Brian QC with it. Okay, so this is the GPU version, but the, the number can change from, from, from release to release, but you have to look for the GPU support in the name. Okay, so we're downloading the binaries and other stuff. Okay, still the QCAM installer. Yes, we want, okay. Okay, so this order number is ours. And this is only for the webinar's purpose. So when you get the, re the when you receive the email from QCAM, you will have your own order number and you have to give that order number, not this. This is just for the uh, example. Okay, then another few data. Is this information correct? Yes. You will, of course, give your own email address and order number. All right, the Brian QC installer is starting. Yes, we can see. And the Brian QC uh, installer detects the GPU hardware which it found uh, in your node. But in case, in the case where you manage a cluster where the head node does not have a GPU, maybe there is nothing which can be found in your system. So that's why the question. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, do you want to list all supported devices? And we are going to say yes, so we can try what if happened, what, what, what would happen in case if it's a cluster head node without any GPU. So if you answer yes, then all supported GPUs are going to be listed. And as you can see, the GPUs are uh, um, grouped together by the so-called compute capabilities. So for example, the GTX 9 series has compute capability 52. The Tesla P100 and the Quadro GP100 has compute capability of 60. Then below that, the 1080 Ti, for example, has a compute capability of 60 fun and, uh, and so on and so forth. So these are the groups based on the compute capability. These can be found for any card on Wikipedia. And we are generating kernels by this compute capability. So if, you, if your card is not detected automatically because there is no GPU, because there is only GPUs in the slave node, for example, then you can choose the number which you see for any given compute capability group and give it here. So we, yes, this is the group as we highlighted it. And our current card is the 1080 Ti, which is in the third group. That's why we give three as an answer and the installation continues. Okay, downloading the usual things, licensing. The Brian QC license is generated in a minute, in a second. Right, okay, so, the Brian QC license is the trial license is downloaded during installation. You don't have anything to do to get the trial license. It's already there. We, we, we copy it to your installation directory. Uh, the QCAM trial license is you receive with the email where you get the link uh, 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 very, uh, for, the, for the QC install.sh. So you get the the trial license there, you got it there. So you have to copy your QCAM trial license from the download directory into the proper QCAM directory. That's what we see here, so yes. And after that, sourcing the qcamp.sh, this is a regular QCAM uh, usage where you set the environmental variables and we print out the command how you can test the GPU runs. You just have to uh, copy it uh, into the command line and run it. Okay. 
And if you see these uh, these lines, these log lines with the with the long time step and the info and system uh, uh, categories, this is uh, this shows that Brian QC is running because this these are these are our formats. And as you can see, the calculation is running. This is a relatively small calculation, only for uh, the webinar's purposes. And if you don't want the GPU to, uh, 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 to be involved in your calculation, then you just delete the dash GPU from the command line and the CPU only calculation will run. And if we compare the energies, of course, they, uh, they will be the same uh, 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 as they, they will be the same uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, how can I say? So in the range of the convergence threshold. Yeah, sorry about that. So yeah, uh, both are, uh, 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 the, the error between them will be smaller than the convergence threshold. So they are the same, yes. So that was installation and testing of the Brian QC module. So that is that. It's uh, uh, approximately 10 minutes to install, and you get a 30-day uh, trial license. And the roadmap for the near future, just briefly, Windows support. Uh, a lot of requests about Windows support. We are, the Brian QC version is there. It's, it's, it's working. Um, we are working together with QCAM to integrate the Brian QC functionality into Windows, uh, into the Windows version of QCAM. We are also working on the improved vibrational analysis, as I told earlier. We have a uh, range-separated exact exchange. We are working with QCAM to invoke these routines uh, from, Q from the QCAM, from QCAM as well, and as a byproduct we will get the range separated DFT functionals. We are also uh, just finished the separated exact exchange for the gradient contribution and working together with QCAM to, uh, to, to, to utilize this from QCAM as well and the builder for non-symmetric densities for other methods. And just one thing because this is <laughs> something which is more similar to day-to-day day-to-day uh, -day work as more more similar than the results I showed. The current Brian QC version, which is released 1.1, uh, is the normalizing factor. This is the constant speed uh, of 1.0 at the uh, top. At the sorry, at the bottom, and the next version will be uh, will has uh, the speed of the blue line. So for small systems, which we are working on right now, 30% of speed up will be in the next release and more than 15% for most cases or more than 5% for every cases. And I'm just showing this as uh, because, of, because of implementing a performance software is like standing on the glacier. You don't see it moving. It's, it's, it's a matter of time scale where you see the results and most of the time we have 5% here, 10% there, and just and just tweaking and 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 testing and tweaking and 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 measuring and testing again. And these 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 small steps, these five percent, ten percent add up, and we can see the numbers we seen earlier. So that's the roadmap for the near future. And again, please uh Last questions in the chat area. I'm going to answer them after the presentation. I hope we have time. And if you are a viewer of a recording, you can comment on YouTube on QCAM's forum topic for this webinar, or please, please feel free to reach out to me anytime in email to istvan.ladiansky at brianqc.com with any questions, feedbacks, or problems during installation or whatever. So. Thank you for your attention, and I'm keen to answer your questions. Thank you, Ishvan, for the informative uh, talk. Very impressive work. Uh, we have several questions already, and feel free to uh, have more questions 
feel free to punch them in the question box here. So got our first question. Uh, so what methodology you are using to generate the roots uh, in the compiler um, slide? Right. Um, uh, methodology. Uh, okay. So uh, this is not. Um, how can I say? So 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 this is uh, this is an interesting question because because uh, because I cannot point out one methodology we use. Uh, it can be thought of as a venue. Okay. I'm I'm going back to the slides. So maybe I can I can. I can, yeah, I can uh, use the, yes, okay, so compiler, yes. So for example, you want to calculate an integral for an electronic repulsion integral, uh, the ABCD quartet. Uh, you generate these roots. Uh, you can think of root one as Obarashaika algorithm, root two as Reese, root three as something else, root four as where you calculate some terms with Obarashaika, other terms with McMurtry Davidson. You mix them somehow because they have uh, they have common terms. This is already a large number of roots, and you add up that you can generate every term in single precision and double precision because GPUs have single and double precision hardware uh, 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 instructions. So it, it, it differs by this. You can also uh, uh, decide in a lot of things how you roll out the code, how you, how you uh, place uh, the, the, the different blocks where you read memory and how you place the different blocks where you where you actually calculating and, and mix them up. So a large number of possible routes are, are, are actually uh, imaginable. Uh, and we generate usually a few hundred, a few hundred of them, which we think will be interesting through some rules, and then the the benchmarking and 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 the the fitting and learning. I, I hope this was the methodology which the question asked for. Thank you. So uh, next question and the uh, performance graph. Um, what's the scaling of DFT with Brian QC? Is it quadratic or cubic? Um, interesting question. Uh, because, okay, so I'm going to ditch this question and and say between the two. <laughs> so, the, because because that I cannot really answer this question because there are different exchange correlation calculation algorithms as well. Some of them are cubic, some of them are uh, uh, quadratic, and we mix those and you have single precision and double precision also mixed into this game. So somewhere between that, and that's why I showed uh, this density functional speed up diagram for these branching hydrocarbons. Uh, and the time scaling for this, because I don't really see the point of fitting uh, uh, a, a polynomial to this and tell you that this is 2.3.2.350 or whatever. And by the design of the algorithm is not decisible because it, it differs as the router changes the code path. So that's why I'm speaking of computation times and speed ups, not uh, com complexities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, next questions uh, for speed ups. Um, do you have data comparing um, to GTX 1080 versus um, RTX 2080? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, if you're looking for data where 1080 Ti is the normalizing factor, so it 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 would be the the 1.0 constant line 
and we only have the 2080 Ti as a speed up curve. I don't have this data uh, in these slides, but uh, in this slide, for example, you can see both of them. This is the 1080 Ti and this is the 2080 Ti uh, for the same calculations. Yeah, it would, be, it would be interesting to show what is the speed up for the 2080 Ti if we normalize by not the CPUs, but the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting, if, 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 if uh, the, the, the asker of this question is here, uh, please uh, uh, send me an email and uh, uh, I'm sure we can normalize the data so, so we, can, we, can, we can see how it scales the, 1080, uh, the 2080 Ti if we normalize by the 1080 Ti. It's an interesting question. I never plotted this, but if, if, you're, if you're interested in more details, send me an email and, and we figure out from this data this new normalization. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, next questions. Um, are both uh, SCF Energy and Gradient supported? Uh, or, um, <clears throat> and also, what are the uh, main advantages over the TerraCam? Mm -hmm. Okay, so first question, yes, uh, single point and uh, gradients, so forces, and some terms from the uh, no, no, no. So, so yeah, and uh, and some terms from the second derivatives are available. So, first question, yes, gradients and energy are there. Advances compared to TerraCam, um, interesting question. So, TerraCam, as far as I tested them, do not have support for these. Uh, uh, high angular momentum orbitals. So I think this is something which, uh, which we've done not like them, but in a different way that you are able to use triple zeta and quadruple zeta basis functions. Also in our last, in our previous webinar, we showed a slide where we had uh, cases uh, where we compared the speed Terracam and Brian QC, and we've seen cases where Terracam uh, was slower than Brian QC, and we've seen cases where the, the roles switched. So I can tell that in some applications, we are faster. I don't really want to tell that in what exact uh, application uh, we are faster than Terracam, because I haven't tested Terracam that much to, to, to actually uh, uh, form uh, 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 a scientifically uh, uh, sound opinion on all uh, applications. So, for example, these 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 transition state metals. I'm not sure how TerraCam performs, but it would be interesting to see. So, high precision and the the, the SDK capability, which uh, which which I think they are stepping in this direction, but I'm not sure about the usability and um, yeah so 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 these are the main main differences and it's it's very good to have TerraCam uh, in this field because they are very good it's a it's a very it's it's a great competition <laughs> uh, uh, to keep up to 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 think about this so it's it's very interesting and and I hope one day we will sit to the same table and discuss how different things done in TerraCam and Brian QC. Thank you. So next questions for the transi transition metal systems. Uh, um, would turning on the GPU uh, invoke more SCF cycles for such, cap for such systems? No, it, sh it shouldn't. I mean, because because we are uh, we are aiming for the same precision, uh, not just in the final energy, but in the folk matrix elements, for example, because they can be used for other derived quantities. Uh, the trajectory of the 
CPU calculation and the GPU calculation should be the same. Of course, because of numerical instabilities, uh, sometimes Brian QC has less steps, one, one or two less steps, sometimes more, one or two more steps, but uh, it shouldn't differ significantly. Okay. If, if it differs from the CPU significantly, then there is some, not really problem, but it, it can be seen as a warning. So, so, so some, some thresholds should be tightened most of, most of the time in these cases. In, in these measurements, uh, the, the iteration count were the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So next question. So, um, so now the uh, seven nanometer AMD process allows um, pretty cheap um, uh, 64 core workstations. Um, given mm -hmm. that fact, uh, would it impact the financial cases you're making for GPU versus CPU? Good question. I uh, had, I, I haven't really had the chance to test the thread reapers yet. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's why I don't have numbers about this. G good question. Uh, one uh, user of Brian QC who works with these transition state metal complexes has a thread reaper and uh, both a, Q a QCAM plus Brian QC license. So I'm thinking based on this fact that we can give some value even if you have these uh, monster CPUs, but I don't have the exact numbers how they are using the GPU module and how they are using the thread repair for QCAM. Okay, thank you. Um, we don't have more questions here. So if you have more questions, we have uh, QCAM Forum uh, website is top.qcam.com. Uh, there is a topic called um, webnot 42 You can post your questions here. If you have more questions or you're watching the videos on uh, YouTube, um, um, thank you again, uh, Ishvan, for the informative talk. And thank you for thank the opportunity. You. Yeah, of course. And um, thank you, all the attendees, for listening. Yeah. This concludes our webinar. We would like to thank Juan Yulu for organizing, running, and moderating this webinar. We also invite you to visit us on Facebook. Thank you for your participation, and see you at the next webinar.